Hi there, how's it going? How do you feel about horrific mind-bending horror? What about adorable fluffy kitties? How about both of those things combined? If those two very different things sound interesting to you, you absolutely should keep watching. Because today we're talking about Cats of Cthulhu by Joel Sparks. Cats of Cthulhu is a game about adorable fluffy kittens who are banded together to fight against Lovecraftian monsters. While these cats are intelligent and understand many things, they are still cats. They don't have any special powers or opposable thumbs, but they're working together to try prevent forces that would destroy their humans who very importantly open the cans of food. They like the world as it is, and they would very much like to keep it that way. Otherwise, for the rest of this world, it's your general Lovecraftian aesthetic and mood. I suspect a fair amount of lore and background has been saved as this is only the first book that is for this game. Sort of like a player's book, a game master's guide, and a monster book. This game is played with a group of players and someone who is the Game Master, who is known as the Cat Herder. I think that's a very funny title. If you know what the expression means to herd cats, it can feel that way sometimes when you're running a game with players. This game is played primarily with D6s. There is actually a special set of dice that you can purchase to play with this game, but regular D6s seem to work just as well. This is a dice pulling game. Threes to sixes count as successes on the dice. So the odds for your cat character seem pretty favourable on a cursory glance. However, before you can even roll the dice, you have to work out whether or not you are the right cat for the job. In this game, there are a variety of different types of cat, and I'm not just talking about tortoiseshell or tuxedo cats. The cats in this game range from the scrappiest street cat to the most pampered show cat. Some types of cats are going to be better at certain things than other cats. For example, there's a type of cat in this game called a two-foot ologist. These cats have been observing the humans and have learnt things about the way they live. These cats might be particularly skilled at opening doors, or they might notice a human's patterns of behaviour. Sometimes, if you don't appear to be initially the right cat for the job, you can explain to the cat herder how your cat is going to tackle the obstacle in their own way. Sometimes your adorable kittens are going to have to fight. Combat in this game is usually dealt with using roll-offs. Depending on the outcome of the dice, the cat may get to choose what happens to their opponent. For example, they might have them pinned or push them in a direction that they want them to go. If a player cat loses, they are likely to get injured. I have to warn you, the cats can die in this game. I know that couldn't be too much for some people. Luckily though, there luckily though, there are about three stages of a cat being hurt, and it is possible before you reach the third stage in many circumstances to get the cat treated so they can get better. There are some special mechanics in this game for when the dice do something fun or exciting. For example, rolling two ones or snake eyes on a test means that something embarrassing is going to happen to the cat. Two sixes means it's an exciting triumph. In these moments, the player who has rolled the double numbers generally gets the final say on what happens to the cat, though other players and the cat herder are allowed to contribute their ideas. There are also cat treats in this game. Every cat at the beginning of the session starts with one and has a max of three. These treats always expire at the end of the session. These can be awarded for good roleplay, clever problem solving, or anything the cat herder thinks is worthy of a cat treat. These treats can then be used to mitigate bad things that happen in the game to the players. Most of the mechanics in this game are focused entirely on the player characters. As I mentioned, there are two other books that you can purchase to play this game. I'm not the biggest fan of this, considering this is a pretty thin book. I tend to prefer my game manuals to have 
as many of the mechanics as possible bundled up in one book, even if it's a thicker book for that reason. It is possible to play this game with just the first book, so you can get a taste and see if you want to get any of the other books and further invest in playing in this game. I have to say I love the decision to have the art in this book be of cats that were done in pencil drawings. The models for the cats that are in the book were actually the backers cats from the original Kickstarter. I think that's a really lovely way to include your backers in the game to have their cat featured as a character illustration. The game is also just nicely set out with a really easy table of contents to find what you're looking for, though this book is so slim that I think you could just flip through and find what you're looking for really fast. There's also some really great general advice in this book for the players, not just on how to enjoy role-playing this game, but how to enjoy role-playing in general. You also get given advice to think like a cat, and that is really a cute touch. I have to admit I'm not the biggest fan that the player's guide, the game master's guide and a monster book is split into three, nor am I really a fan of custom dice. One of the things that drew me to the hobby of tabletop role-playing games at large was the fact that most of the resources to play a game will be found in your home. In addition, most game books are just published as one book. If there's supplementary material that's published, it's usually because they couldn't fit it into a reasonably sized first book. I do feel that I am missing a few pieces of information and mechanics for this review, but I wasn't too certain if I wanted to buy all three books to review at once. I wish I had a bit more information about the world that this is set in, and perhaps some inspiration or adversaries that the player cats could take on. Clearly this is another game for cat lovers. I'm not sure if it's just my own bias or where the market is, but I haven't seen a lot of dog or other pet themed games. Also, if you enjoy the horror style of HP Lovecraft, this is absolutely a game that is worth checking out. If you don't mind the idea of your cat character potentially dying, and you like both of those things, I certainly think this is a game worth checking out. It's a really easy game to wrap your head around, and there are some interesting and unique mechanics to dig into as well. I managed to get my copy of Cats of Cthulhu when it was on sale for about $10 USD. You probably saw it in my unboxing video, if you watched that. I'm not entirely sure yet if it was a worthwhile purchase. There's things I like about the game, but the decision to split the content across three books when the first book is so thin does have me a little bit disappointed and uncertain about how to judge this game. Overall, I do think this is an interesting game with some cool elements. I mentioned earlier not being sure if there are any dog themed games, and I've just remembered there's The Very Good Boys of Chernobyl, which I do have my eye on. I just can't get it in Australia yet in print form, so I'm working on that one. Is there a pet out there that you think needs more games about? I personally am always down for more rat themed games, and I think rats are supreme. If you have any other thoughts, maybe about the decision to split the information for this game across three books, please let me know in a a comment down below. If you enjoy the video, I encourage you to like, subscribe, maybe even share with a friend. It just helps me know I'm making things you like. I hope you're all well and I'll see you next time at the gaming table. Bye!